Theodore. There's another story coming right up. And you can always learn more about Theodore Tugboat on the internet. Find us through PBS Online. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Vote up Hank and George and the harbor master too. Hello. My old bell here needs a good polish to get it all shiny again. I'm all out of polish. I better get another can. I have some more on my desk right here. I wonder what's in this box. <gasps> Would you look at that? Seashells. Oh, I collected all these shells myself. Well, look at this one. You see, it has ruffles, and it seems kind of delicate, but actually, it's, it's very strong. Oh, and this one, it's all shiny and smooth, like glass. <gasps> boy, oh boy. Well, you know, you can spend hours and hours looking at things from the ocean. Pugwash knows all about that. Theodore woke up one fine morning. Rise and shine, Pugwash, he smiled. I'm up, smiled Pugwash. Theodore was taking care of Pugwash, the mini-sub, while Stuiak, her carrier ship, was in the repair dock. After the morning work meeting, Theodore set off with Pugwash for his first job of the day. We have lots of important things to do today, said Theodore. Where was she? Pugwash was following Philip, one of the fairy twins. Or was it Fillmore? It was always hard to tell those twins apart. Ooh, she said, and started following the other fairy. Pugwash, whistled Theodore. Coming, Theodore. Theodore smiled. He knew that Pugwash just loved to wander off and explore things. Meanwhile, over at the Great Ocean Dock, the dispatcher was talking to Foduck. A report has come from Cayley's Cove of cargo falling off a ship. It could be something dangerous, said Foduck seriously. I would like you to check it out, please, the dispatcher told him. Of course, said Foduck. I am the safety tug. And George will go with you, added the dispatcher. I will, said George. George, repeated Foduck. I am qualified to go by myself. George will take Shelburne the sea barge along with Pugwash, said the dispatcher, in case there is anything on the bottom of the ocean that needs to be brought up. Please proceed immediately. Well, the two tugs weren't very happy. You see, they both wanted to be the tug in charge of an important mission. Theodore took Pugwash to the salvage team who were setting out for Cayley's Cove. This is an important mission, announced Foduck. Follow proper procedures at all times. Safety first. Is my engine louder than Foduck's? George asked Theodore. Well, it's, uh... Is my emergency flag on straight? Foduck interrupted. Theodore had to smile at his two friends. Sometimes they seem to be thinking about the strangest things. Ooh, can I have a signal flag too, Theodore? When they got to Cayley's Cove, Troro, the fishing trawler, told the salvage team what he had seen. It was late last night and pretty dark, but I'm sure I saw something fall off a ship passing by. Don't panic, said Foduck calmly. I'll take over from here. Well, I'm trained to deal with this, said George, butting in front of Foduck. Many sub ready? Ready and waiting, called Pugwash eagerly. Lower away, commanded Foduck, butting in front of George. Shelburne slowly began to lower his cable. Tug on the end of the cable if you can find something, George reminded Pugwash. Then we'll raise it up with the cable, said Pugwash. Diving! Is 
that a siren? Fodok looked around for the owner of the voice. Then he looked down. It was Dorothy Dory. Why, uh, yes, said Fodok. Yes, it is. Can you blow it? said Dorothy breathlessly. It's not a toy, said Fodok sternly. It's an important piece of safety equipment. But I could show you my special signal flag. George didn't like Fodok getting all the attention. I have two engines, he trumpeted, turning to Shora. I can go backwards as fast as most ships can go forwards. Down below, Pugwash had arrived at the bottom of the ocean. She looked this way and that. And soon spotted an oil barrel. Well, that's what must have fallen off that ship, she thought to herself. It really wasn't dangerous, but it should be brought up. Pugwash was about to tug on her line to tell the others, when something caught her eye. Ah, oh, she said. And off she went to see what it was. Up above, Fodak had decided to give Dorothy a little safety lesson while he was waiting for Pugwash to tug the cable. If you ever see these flags, he was saying, it means danger. Stay away. Now can I hear your siren? pleaded Dorothy. George was showing off for Toro, grooming and booming his powerful engine as loud as he could. Beneath them, Pugwash was examining the things she saw. It was just an old anchor. But then, something else caught her attention. Something wavy and wild looking, not too far away. So, off she went to explore the new mystery. Back in the big harbor, Theodore was finishing docking a small cargo ship. He glanced around, expecting to see Pugwash and the salvage team returning from Cayley's Cove. But they were nowhere in sight. They've been gone a long time, he said, gazing towards the harbor entrance. I hope Pugwash hasn't wandered off again. Theodore decided to ask the dispatcher if he could go and check if everything was all right. Deep beneath the waves, Pugwash had discovered that the wavy, wild-looking mystery was kelp, a giant ocean plant. Oh, she gasped, and slowly entered the kelp jungle, pretending she was hunting tiger sharks. Meanwhile, Theodore was making his way to Cayley's Cove. When he rounded the last bend of the cove, he was in for quite a surprise. Fodak was flying all his signal flags. While George was racing around Truro backwards. Don't try this in your cove, he hollered to the fishing trawler. Theodore! grinned George, whizzing around, booming and booming his big engine. What are you doing out here? Did you find anything? said Theodore. What's that? George called over his own engine. I can't quite hear you! Did you find anything dangerous? Theodore shouted. Fodak noticed Theodore. Well, uh, yes. Yes, I did, he said. That lighthouse has a burnt out bulb. I mean, did Pugwash find the overboard cargo? Frowned Theodore. Oh, said Fodak. Oh, added George. Well, where is Pugwash? said Theodore, looking around. She's right here, said Fodak, on the end of Shelburne's cable. Shelburne began to raise his cable up out of the water. Uh-oh, said Theodore.
It's all my fault, Kodak said. I should have paid more attention to what I was doing. No, no, it's my fault that Pugwash is gone, said George. I wasn't paying attention. No, it was me, insisted Podoc. No, George started to say. They were startled by Theodore's whistle. It doesn't matter who wasn't paying attention, he said. What's important right now is to pay attention to finding Pugwash. Well, right away, everyone knew Theodore was right. I'll use my special underwater sonar, said Podoc right away. I'll stand by with Shelburne, said George. I hope Pugwash hasn't gone too far, said Theodore. Down below, Pugwash heard a pinging sound. Maybe it's a whale trying to talk to me, she thought, and she pinged back. I hear something, cried Podoc. That way. Theodore had an idea. Shelburne, lower your cable again. The big barge slowly began to lower his cable back into the water. Pugwash followed Fodok's pinging and saw something floating in the water. She quietly cruised over to see what it was. I feel something moving my cable, called Shelburne. Pull it up, cried Theodore. Everyone held their breath as Shelburne hauled his cable up again. And soon, Pugwash popped to the surface, safe and sound. Hi, everyone. Everyone blew their whistles. Hooray! In no time at all, the team raised the oil barrel and headed back to the big harbor. Next time, said Kodak, we'll pay attention to what we're doing. We sure will, said George. Me too, added Pugwash. I can't wait to get home and tell everyone about our adventure, smiled Theodore. Let's hurry, said Shelburne in his slow voice. Oh, said Theodore. The tugs all turned to where Theodore was looking. The sun was setting over the edge of the ocean in a beautiful red glow. Uh, well, what were we doing? said Theodore. Well, everyone had a very good laugh about that. Pugwash sure loves to explore. Now, what was I doing? Oh, yes, I was looking at my shell collection. No, no, before that. I was polishing my bell. Here, here's a new can of polish. And now, I can finish my job. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. I wonder, does a shiny bell sound louder? Oh, well, it certainly seems louder. I never noticed how nice my bell sounds. I'm doing it again, aren't I? Maybe I'll ring my bell when I finish polishing. So long. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too, a friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore, likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do, pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor and the great big world is so much fun, so many brand new things to discover, waking with the sun, gotta get the job done, oh, Theodore, Emily, Voda, Hank and George and the harbor master too.